Welcome to the Fat Emperor Podcast. I'm your host, Ivor Cummins. Readdress these issues and look at them through fresh lenses and find such fabulous outcomes. It makes this job rewarding. It makes me glad that I'm doing what I'm doing. And, and I, I feel sorry for my colleagues who are stuck in the, you know, following the protocols, click, click, click. Low fat, here's more medicines for you. Low fat, here's more medicines for you. Oh, I'm sorry you had that stroke. Oh, I'm sorry you had that heart attack. I think that my greater expertise is as an internist and dealing with patients who have cardiac disease and how we modify risk factors and prevent heart attacks from happening, which at the end of the day is the bottom line. Imaging exactly. Is tool. Imaging is a tool. It's a powerful tool. It's a necessary tool in order to accomplish our goal of stopping heart attacks. But, but my greater experience is in the latter than actually stopping heart attacks. Imaging, yes, stopping heart attacks is where the payoff is. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because there's no point knowing about the level of disease, knowing if there's a huge risk, risk present, if you don't actually intervene to change the future. So absolutely, that's what it's all about. So we're going to actually talk about both, I'd say, in the coming uh, hour or so. And I'll probably preface things by um, certainly mentioning David Bobbitt and the Irish Heart Disease Awareness that he set up. That's the only reason I'm able to actually um, create these podcasts and do all the other work I do for awareness. And as you well know, and we'll talk about it, David had in 2012 a calcium scan, actually by fluke or coincidence, and found out he had a 900 score and three blocked arteries after essentially passing a series of executive medicals and treadmills over the previous five six years and being told he was bulletproof and of course he's interested in the fixes as you rightly say that's huge and he applied them and stopped his calcify or calcification progressing but he's also very much passionate about getting awareness out there on this technology that can let people know they're at risk so do you reckon, Bill, I suppose there's millions of David Bobbitts out there who are harboring enormous disease and really without a calcium scan or a proper diagnostic, they may not be aware at all? Almost every day we find David Bobbitts who think they're healthy, they're vegan, they exercise, they're thin, they get a heart scan and find out they're in the 90th percentile. So, yes, I, I have a great debt to David Bobbitt for what he has done to try to promote this message. And on my bucket list is the opportunity to meet David one, one day. That, that hasn't happened yet, but I had a chance to meet his cardiologist, but I have not met him yet. So yes, David Bobbitt's are everywhere. I see them all the time. I live in Boulder, Colorado, where everyone is healthy. Everyone thinks they're immune to heart disease, yet heart disease is still a major killer in Boulder, Colorado. And so the heart scan has told me which patients have disease, which patients don't have disease, which patients need to be doing more to change their disease process. And through serial calcium imaging, I'm then able to tell who has mitigated their risk. So in David Bobbitt's circumstance, he has a very high calcium score, but since he has been able to modify his risk factors, his calcium score is now stable and his risk is very, very low. It never reaches zero, but it's very, very low. He has reduced his risk 40-fold by treating his risk factors sufficiently. This plaque burden is now stable. And the, the, re the reality is everyone can do this. There's no one who can't take their disease and make it go away. They just need to have the data, need to have the information, how much disease do they have, and then over time, is that disease stable? It's very simple. It's very straightforward. You mentioned before the, the talk that we're going to do this not at too complex a level, that you don't have to be a scientist to understand. Well, I've always said that when I get old and addled, I'm going to limit my practice to stopping heart attacks because that's the easy stuff. You know, the 35-year-old female with belly pain, that's the hard stuff. Stopping heart disease, stopping heart attacks, that's the easy stuff. And the fact that we're not doing it is a tragedy and an outrage and an embarrassment. We're continuing to practice medicine using expensive, invasive procedures that actually at the end of the day have been shown to do no value. And we're ignoring inexpensive, incredibly low radiation diagnostics 
and nutritional advice and exercise advice and lifestyle advice that's easy, that's inexpensive, that works, that serves to stop heart attacks. And that's really, really key. That's important. So why we can't do that, why we're not doing that, sadly, it probably comes down to the economics of it. I know a lot of people who've made a lot of money treating heart disease the wrong way. I know a handful of people who went nearly bankrupt trying to prevent the heart attacks the way that David Bobbitt's heart attack is being prevented. And so when you can't make a living preventing heart attacks and you can make a fortune treating heart attacks inappropriately, sadly the economics rule and that's where we are. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see my subscribe button in the middle of the screen, a free viewing of the Widowmaker movie on the far right, and myself and Dr. Gerber's book, Eat Rich, Live Long, on the left. Otherwise, please do subscribe to the audio podcast. Thanks.